Hello, wonderful people. My name is Carol Vay, and welcome back to my channel. As we celebrate Easter this weekend and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, I'm reminded about how it seems like the disciples who were following Jesus didn't really believe that he would be resurrected the way he said he would. Or even when Jesus explained that he would be suffering and die and would be resurrected again, that Peter acted like that was an inappropriate idea. We remember that situation when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So right after this awesome moment for Peter, Jesus predicted his death and resurrection to the disciples. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So Peter goes from being praised for hearing from the Father to being rebuked for not believing what Jesus had said would happen. Peter probably didn't fully understand that this was God's plan to save mankind from their sins. The disciples probably believed that Jesus would be setting up his kingdom at that time and not suffering and dying. They probably couldn't even relate to him being raised again three days later. And Peter's response to Jesus in this passage kind of reminds me of how the world and even many churches and Christians look at the rapture of the church like it's not really going to happen. We're just going to live in this world like this forever. Even though Jesus reveals in his scriptures that the, the rapture of the church will happen and that he will return to this earth. And just like Peter was making it sound like Jesus' words were inappropriate, let it not be so. That's how the world and even many churches look at the rapture of the church. This was the first of three times that Jesus would predict his death, burial, and resurrection to the disciples. The second time was in Matthew chapter 17. Now, while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the son of man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men and they will kill him and the third day he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And then he told them a third time in Matthew chapter 20. Now Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples aside on the road and said to them, behold, we are going to Jerusalem and the son of man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. If the disciples knew and really believed what we know now today, they would have expected that tomb to be empty on that Sunday morning. The two Marys who were coming to the tomb that Sunday morning expected to see the Lord's body still laying there since they brought the things they would need to anoint his body. And yet when they got to the tomb, there was a great earthquake and an angel of the Lord came and rolled back the stone on the tomb. And it must have been such a scary sight. So scary that the the guards that were guarding the tomb that night fainted. It seemed like they were laying there dead. 
But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So even though Jesus had told his followers three times that this would happen, they still didn't seem to believe it. It makes me think of Thomas, who we affectionately call Doubting Thomas. And you might know I compare myself to him because before I was saved, I was telling the Lord, you're going to have to show me a miracle like the miracles that we saw in the Old Testament. And he answered my request because the night that I suddenly believed the scriptures that I was reading, I could literally feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And to me, that was a miracle and I will never be the same. The disciples had told Thomas that Jesus had raised from the dead and that they had seen him, but he wasn't willing to believe unless he could see him with his own eyes and, and put his fingers in those holes that pierced the Lord. Finally, Jesus did reveal himself to Thomas, knowing everything that he had said, and said, here, put your hands here. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Well, just like Jesus' followers didn't really believe that he would raise back to life on the third day, many born again believers don't really believe that Jesus will be coming to rapture the church or especially don't believe that it will be anytime soon. And yet scripture told us that it would be this way. I love the passage in Peter's second epistle titled God's promise is not slack because Peter reminds us of what God has done in the past which is easy for all of us to believe. He tells us that there will be scoffers in these last days, and he tells us why God might be delaying. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So just like Peter told Jesus, this shall not happen to you when Jesus spoke of his death, burial, and resurrection. And just like Jesus' followers expected to see that dead body in the tomb, so many today don't believe that Jesus will be coming back anytime soon to rapture the church, or that we will experience his second coming when he returns to the earth to rule and reign in his millennial kingdom. They believe that he came the first time to die for their sins, that he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. But could it be that it's more difficult to believe in future prophecy? And I say that it seems like they don't believe because when we are awakened out of sleep, when our eyes are truly open to these end times, we can't help 
but talk about it and be excited about it, eagerly waiting for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, excited to see our bridegroom. I've seen so many prophetic words about evil ending and righteousness coming back to this earth, except without the Lord's actual presence here on earth. And yes, we have the Holy Spirit with us, but there will be a day when the Lord touches down on the Mount of Olives and rules and reigns from the throne of David. In fact, what we see happening on earth in these last days is exactly what the Lord told us these end times would be like. Lawlessness, Wars, rumors of wars, violence like it was in the days of Noah. And he compared these to birth pains, which come closer together and become more intense. So for those who just cannot face these end times, they will continue to predict revivals, that the church will grow and even take over society. And yet that's not what the word of God says. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's easy to see why the disciples may have been confused about the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. When I read a scripture out of the book of Isaiah, which combines his first and second coming. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so it's not surprising when people will combine the rapture of the church with the Lord's second coming, just like the disciples probably combined his first and second coming based on this Isaiah scripture. So the disciples saw the glorified risen Lord after his death on the cross. They were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And doesn't it seem like they went from hiding during the crucifixion and even when they saw his glorified body to becoming bold and sharing the gospel after they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. These early followers of the Lord taught and believed that the Lord would be returning soon to rapture the church. And the resurrection of the dead in Christ happens right before the catching up of those of us who are alive and remain at the time of the rapture. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we really need to believe this will happen. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ who he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise for if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. There are so many churches in these end times that do not teach Bible prophecy, believing that it's too divisive of a topic, or maybe uh, these people didn't learn about Bible prophecy in their Bible colleges or seminaries. 
And yet, just like the disciples received so much boldness when they received the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, we also receive this type of boldness when our eyes are open to these end times, when we truly do believe that the Lord is coming back and he will rapture the church very soon. Not only do we have this boldness to share, but it, it causes us to wanna to live a more godly life while we are waiting for this event. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So after Jesus died on the cross and was buried, at that point, did any of his believers actually believe he would rise on the third day? After the women were told at the tomb that he had risen, when the angel said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again? and they remembered his words. Two of the Lord's followers were on the road to Emmaus that day when Jesus resurrected, approached them, and they did not recognize him. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. They invited Jesus to come and eat and stay with them. And now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. So these two returned to Jerusalem to tell the 11 disciples about seeing the risen Lord. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So even up until this point, the disciples were troubled and didn't really believe it was him. So it seems like this might be human nature to doubt what God's word says about the future. It is literally impossible for God to lie. And he said he would be raised from the dead. So why do doubts continue to rise in the hearts of his followers regarding his soon return? It happened then and it's happening now. It's time to wake up and look up for our redemption draws near. We can be eternally saved and rapture ready when we believe that Jesus did come the first time to die for our sins, to shed his blood for the remission of our sins, fulfilling the feast of Passover. On Passover, a lamb without spot and without blemish would be sacrificed. And when this feast was instituted in the book of Exodus, we read about how that lamb's blood was placed on the door of those believers. And when the angel of the Lord saw this blood on the doorpost, he would pass over that home. Those people inside were not subject to God's wrath. When John the Baptist saw Jesus come on the scene, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus did fulfill the feast of Passover when he shed his blood once and for all for our past, present, and future sins. He was buried fulfilling the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and he rose again on the third day, fulfilling the Feast of First Fruits. And the Bible says that when we believe that he did this for us, 
we are saved. And when we believe, we are given the Holy Spirit of promise, who is our guarantee until the day of redemption, which is soon. So I pray that you are believing this today. If this is you, then praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And I will be praying for you and praying for all of you who might be watching this right now, that the Lord meets you right where you need him today with whatever it is that you are facing and going through. He knows what it is. And I pray he touches you in a tangible way with that peace and comfort that really does surpass all understanding. And I want to thank you for joining me. I really do love and appreciate all of you so much. You encourage me more than you know. And God willing, I will see you in the next video. So take care and God bless you. Mm -hmm.